Previously on D&D Builds, we built Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. Now it's time to build one of my favorites, Piccolo. And I'm not going to be doing that voice the entire time, because otherwise my voice would be destroyed. But we're going to go ahead and build Piccolo and start with the race. He's from another world called Namek. He looks a little off compared to most humans. And overall, he can be cranky and kind of brooding. So we're going to go with the Gith Yankee as our race. This gives us the feature Astral Knowledge. So we can learn one skill of our choice. We're going to grab Perception because that's generally pretty helpful. And you can then sense the energy levels of creatures around you. You also gain the feature Gith Yankee Psionics. So this gives you a few extra spells as you level up throughout this build. You can cast them for free once, but they're also added to your spell list. This will give you the Mage Hand cantrip right off the bat. Then once you hit third level overall, you can get the Jump spell. And then at fifth level overall, you get Misty Step, which is especially good to replicate the whole Dragon Ball Z, we're gonna fight so fast, it looks like you're teleporting around type of thing. And then the last notable feature you get from being a Gith Yankee is Psychic Resilience, giving you resistance to psychic damage. Then when it comes to a background, you are known to meditate and kind of introspectively look within yourself, almost like you're studying, or at least that's the justification I'm gonna use for it, because there's a bunch of spells that you can get by choosing the background, Quandric student. This expands your overall spell list, but we'll go ahead and grab all those spells as we level up throughout this build. It does also give us the Strixhaven Initiate feat, and specifically with the Quandrix version of the Strixhaven Initiate, you get to choose two cantrips out of three possible choices, but you already get Mage Hand from being a Gith Yankee, so we're just gonna grab the other two, which are Druid Craft and Guidance, both of which actually work because since you have that greenish skin, you actually don't need to eat. You're more like a plant type of thing. So you just need water and then you photosynthesize, but that goes a little too deep into it. Overall, it's just what I'm using to justify the fact that you have Druid Craft as a cantrip. Guidance also makes sense because you happen to be the one character in Dragon Ball Z that trains most of the other characters when it comes to Goku and Gohan, and then later Gohan's daughter, Pan. This also gives us one spell from the Druid or Wizard class that we can cast once for free, and then it's automatically added to our spell list, so we can always use any spell slots for it later but the most beneficial one is gonna be shield. This will allow you to deflect some energy blasts like something from magic missiles and also boost up your armor class by five points as a reaction. Then when it comes to some starting stats, you're overall a very wise character and we wanna min-max this a bit so we're only gonna focus on one physical trait. So dexterity is gonna help us a bit more. So these are gonna be our starting stats. Then we get a few more points thanks to our Get the Yankee race and we're gonna boost up our wisdom by two points and our dexterity by one. Don't worry, we'll address those odd scores in just a second. Then when it comes to a starting class, because yes, we will be doing a multi-class, we're gonna go with a monk. It's very obvious you know tons about martial arts, so monk seemed like the obvious choice. When you become a monk, you get proficiency in saving throws with strength and dexterity, and you get to choose two skills. So we're gonna grab athletics and insight, and immediately when you become a monk, you get martial arts. So right now, our unarmed strikes deal a D4 of damage, but that's gonna level up as we level up in Monk. We can use dexterity instead of strength for those strikes, so now our dexterity is kinda useful, but it's gonna become a little less useful in just a second. And when you use the attack action on your turn, you can automatically make an unarmed strike on top of that as a bonus action for free. Then at second level of Monk, you get key. So you have an amount of key points equal to your level in Monk. You can spend them on things like Flurry of Blows, so now as a bonus action, instead of just attacking once, you can attack twice, or you can spend it on patient defense, so you can take the dodge action as a bonus action on your turn, or the final option for using your key at this level is step of the wind. So you can take the dash or disengage action as a bonus action, and your jump distance is doubled for the turn. Also at second level of monk, you get unarmored movement. So now your movement speed is boosted by 10 feet, and this actually goes up again as you level up in Monk as well. Then at third level of Monk, you get to choose a monastic tradition, otherwise known as a subclass. And although Piccolo doesn't use it as much as I think he should, he has stretchy arms that he can wrap around people. This is actually called his demon hand technique, but a great way to pull this off as a monk is by taking the subclass Way of the Astral Self. When you get this subclass, you immediately get the feature Arms of the Astral Self. So as a bonus action, you can spend one key point. You activate these arms and it lasts for 10 minutes. So now your arms can actually stretch a little bit because the range of your unarmed strikes increases by five feet. 
so you can kind of reach out a little further. But it goes a little further beyond that. Because remember, I said your dexterity is going to matter a little less in a second. And that's because you can actually use your wisdom modifier for all of your attacks as long as this feature is active. Which is especially nice because then we can just focus on wisdom. Because most other monk abilities are actually very reliant on your wisdom score. And on top of all of that, if you want to use those stretchy arms to wrap around someone, you know, to make a grapple check with that proficiency in athletics that we grabbed a second ago, you can also use your wisdom modifier for all of your strength checks and saving throws. And just one little extra bonus, any unarmed strikes that you're going to make with these astral arms, they count as force now, which most enemies are not resistant to force damage. So that's a nice little benefit. Then there's one more feature you get from being a basic monk at third level, and that's deflect missiles. So whenever a projectile is shot at you, you can actually reduce the damage by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk level. If you reduce that damage to zero, you can actually catch the projectile and throw it right back at your enemies. Then at fourth level of monk, you get an ability score improvement. And we're gonna go ahead and round out a couple scores by throwing one point into Wisdom and one point into Constitution. Also at this level of Monk, you get slow falls, so you can reduce the damage if you fall a long distance. And you have the optional feature, Quickened Healing, which actually works pretty well for Piccolo because he has the ability to regenerate cut off limbs. So some form of healing was kind of necessary pretty early on. Using this ability requires two key points and you get to regenerate a number of hit points equal to one roll of your martial arts die. Then at fifth level of monk, you get some big stuff. Your martial arts die upgrades from a D4 to a D6, making it far more usable. You get the feature extra attack, so now you can attack twice as your action and twice as your bonus action if you use flurry of blows. And you get stunning strike. So if you hit somebody with a monk weapon or one of your unarmed strikes, you have a chance to be able to stun them by spending one key point. And being stunned is pretty darn powerful, and it's especially awesome that we can just focus on wisdom because of the chance that they are able to save against being stunned is reliant on how strong your wisdom is. Then we're going to go ahead and take one more level in Monk. This boosts our unarmored movement from 10 feet to 15 feet, making our overall speed 45 feet. We get key empowered strikes, so even if our astral arms aren't active and we're relying more on our dexterity, our unarmed strikes still count as magical, making it so we can overcome some resistances. And you get one more feature from Way of the Astral Self, called Visage of the Astral Self, allowing you to spend one more key point to either add this on to your activation of your arms, or you can just do this by itself. It gives you three benefits while it's active. The first one being Astral Sight. So now you can see in darkness. The second one being Wisdom of the Spirit giving you advantage on insight and intimidation checks. And the third is Word of the Spirit. And this is where you're gonna have to channel your inner Chris Sabat, who is the American voice actor for Piccolo. And I always idolize him because I kind of wish I could do his voices. And in general, if I could have that dream job of being a voice actor, He's kind of like the top tier of what I wish I could become. But Word of the Spirit allows you to speak directly to one particular creature, whether you're trying to shout words of encouragement to Goku or Gohan or whoever, but you can make it so one creature within 60 feet of you can hear those words and nobody else can hear it. Or alternatively, you can just shout really loud and anybody within 600 feet of you can hear what you're saying. Now I think it's time for a multi-class. And in the Dragon Ball Z universe, you merge with Kong me who is essentially a god and watcher and protector of earth and the fact that you're kind of using the energy of a god or any of the other times where you summon the dragon balls to rely on shenron to help you out who is also pretty close to being a god of some sort overall i think this relies a lot on divine energy and powers so i think a great choice is for us to multi-class into cleric this is especially awesome because now we can rely even more on our wisdom when you become a cleric you get a divine domain otherwise known as a subclass and this is more about the divine creature you're either channeling energy from or whatever and there's not actually a lot that would fit with the idea of Kami or Shenron. So I dug a little deeper and Kami had the ability to let out this sort of invisible wave of destruction. And leaning into that idea, I think the best subclass for our cleric is gonna be a Tempest Cleric. This expands our spell list, which we'll dive into in just a second because we're gonna go through all the spells 
on each level. But this subclass also gives us proficiency with martial weapons and heavy armor, but we're not going to use either of them. One of the more usable abilities is Wrath of the Storm, which we get when we take this subclass. So when a creature within five feet of you hits you with an attack, you can force that creature to make a dexterity saving throw. And if it fails, it takes some lightning or thunder damage, your choice. But even if it succeeds on it, it still takes half damage. The amount of damage is going to be equal to 2d8. And you can use this reaction a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier per long rest. Now it's also impossible to dive into cleric without getting some spell casting, and that's going to be pretty helpful. We've already got guidance thanks to our background, but we're going to take sacred flame because we need some sort of energy blast. And that's going to be the closest thing we can get, unfortunately, at this point. We'll grab Thaumaturgy for the incredible voice acting that I already mentioned, because Thaumaturgy just allows you to boom out your voice whenever you want. And then we'll also grab Word Radiance, which allows you to damage everybody right in your vicinity. But this is going to be more like you powering up with that energy flame thing that goes up around you as all of your key and energy rises. You're also going to get some first level spells you can choose. You automatically get a couple from being a Tempest Cleric, although the most notable and relatable to Kami is going to be Thunder Wave. But Piccolo has a very iconic ability called his Special Beam Cannon. So in order to drive that idea home a little bit more, we're going to grab the spell Guiding Bolt. This allows you to shoot a radiant light streaking towards one enemy. It deals 4d6 radiant damage on a first level spell slot, which is pretty decent. And the next attack roll against that enemy is at advantage. Almost like you just blasted a hole right through it. So of course it's gonna be a little damaged in trying to deal with it. One other spell I would try to grab is Shield of Faith. Your armor class is gonna be very reliant on your dexterity and wisdom ability scores, but we can boost this up even further with Shield of Faith giving you a plus two bonus to your armor class. Then at second level of Cleric, you get access to Channel Divinity, which you can use once per short or long rest at this level, but you can use it for turning undead away, which is not really fitting. But specifically from being a Tempest Cleric, you can use this ability to make any lightning or thunder damage completely maximized, meaning you don't even have to roll dice. It's just automatic. And frankly, I'm very disappointed in this subclass for not giving us the spell Lightning Bolt. That would be so unbelievably perfect to recreate that special beam cannon and being able to maximize it would make it even better. But Lightning Bolt is excessively powerful and that's probably why Wizards of the Coast didn't add it to the subclass because it might be a little unbalanced because maximizing that kind of damage would be a little insane, but it would have been perfect for this build. But I guess we can't completely break the game with every one of our builds. Then at third level of Cleric, we get access to second level spells. And this is part of why I chose to be a Quandrix student because now we have access to use this spell in large reduce. Both when Piccolo faces off against Goku very early in the series and in the Dragon Ball superhero movie, he's able to grow into insane proportions. So having access to the spell in large reduce really helps with this because you can now grow to one size larger, which also boosts up your damage by 1d4. By default, you also get the spell Shatter, which is just another call to Kami for the invisible shockwave, boom, whatever that you can cause. It deals a decent amount of damage in an AOE and it's a pretty solid spell. Then at fourth level of Cleric, you get another ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and max out our wisdom, making us the best Cleric we could possibly be and helping out most of our monk stuff. Then at fifth level of cleric, our channel divinity doesn't just turn away undead. It can actually flat out destroy them if they happen to be an undead of challenge rating one half or lower. But also at fifth level, you get access to third level spells. This automatically gives us the spell call lightning, which is kind of nice, but not as good as something like lightning bolt would have been. And then I wanted some way to power up Piccolo to make him a little stronger as if he's going into the orange Piccolo form or something. And there's three great spells we're gonna grab at this level because you're gonna be in melee and because you're doing mostly physical attacks. So we're gonna grab Spirit Guardians, which might not fit quite as well, but it's a super powerful spell to have, especially in melee, it does tons of damage, just to anything within 15 feet of you, while at the same time reducing your enemy's speed by half. But more straightforward power-ups would be with the spell Haste, which you get from being a Quandrix student, doubling your movement speed, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws, and giving you plus two bonus to your armor class, and at the same time giving you one extra action to use, which you can only use for one attack, but you can also use it for dash, disengage, or 
whatever other things you can use an action for. The only other thing you can't use it for is some additional spell casting, unfortunately. Another way to do a simple power up, but it's still very effective because of how many attacks you get as a monk is the spell Spirit Shroud. So whenever you make any attack, you can deal an extra 1d8 of damage. The damage is radiant, necrotic, or cold, but you can do four attacks as a monk. So adding a possible extra 4d8 on a single turn is pretty darn solid. Then at sixth level of cleric, you can use one more channel divinity per short or long rest, and you get another feature from being a tempest cleric called thunderous strike. So whenever you deal lightning damage to a creature that's large or smaller, you can push it 10 feet further away from you. Then at seventh level of cleric, you get access to fourth level spell slots. And honestly, there's only two very important ones to grab. One is banishment because it's a a very powerful spell and Kami was able to lock evil spirits away so I feel like that fits and the other is death ward so now if you get dropped to zero hit points while this is active you automatically go to one hit point instead it lasts eight hours long it doesn't require concentration and overall you should probably just always have this active especially in the Dragon Ball universe because otherwise you gotta wait around until everybody collects some Dragon Balls again. Then at eighth level of Cleric, you're able to destroy even stronger undead all the way up to a challenge rating one. You get another feature from being a Tempest Cleric. So now once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack, you can deal an extra 1d8 thunder damage on top of everything else. And of course, the other feature you get at eighth level is another ability score improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and boost up our dexterity by two points because it's gonna help mostly just our armor class at this point. Then at ninth level of Cleric, you get access to fifth level spells and this is going to give us another massive energy slash invisible wave attack that you might get from kami or any of the other energy blasty abilities that you have because thanks to being a tempest cleric you automatically get destructive wave so every creature of your choice within 30 feet of you has to make a constitution saving throw or they take 5d6 thunder damage and 5d6 radiant or necrotic damage as well and on top of that they're knocked prone so any melee attacks right afterwards are going to be at advantage if they succeed on that con save they still take half damage and they aren't knocked prone but it's still a pretty powerful spell then at 10th level of cleric you get divine intervention giving you a chance to ask for a god's help with whatever you need you roll a d100 and if the number you rolled is equal to or less than your cleric level you automatically get to succeed on whatever you're asking for the d still has discretion on how this actually takes effect or how much it's actually able to help but you can think of this as asking Shenron himself to grant one of your wishes and speaking of Shenron granting one of your wishes at 11th level of cleric you get access to six level spell slots so we're gonna grab the spell planar ally this allows you to summon a creature from another plane or some sort of insanely powerful entity it can be a god a primordial a demon or just something with cosmic power you get to ask that creature to perform a service for you and just generally help you out just try not to go quite as fickle as bulma does where she's literally just asking for like cosmetic surgery related stuff from an all-powerful wish dragon but i also wanted to amp up the idea of either your special beam cannon or a kamehameha and one of the best ways to do that is with the spell sunbeam sunbeam makes it so a bright brilliant light of energy just blasts out from you. It is 60 feet long and five feet wide. Each creature in that line has to make a con save, meaning that you can blast through one creature and through another, which does happen when you use a special beam cannon. On a failed save, the creature takes 6d8 radiant damage and is blinded. On a successful save, it still takes half damage and isn't blinded, but overall it's still pretty strong. And you can actually concentrate on this spell for up to a minute, meaning that you can continuously blast an enemy with this. Whether it's your special beam cannon or a Kamehameha, overall that's just a very powerful ability. And being able to continuously blast it out makes it even stronger. And that makes more sense because of the like conflicting energy blasts that happen in Dragon Ball Z where they're just trying to push back and forth with it. And then also on top of this, at this level, you can destroy slightly stronger undead by destroying a challenge rating two. Then at 12th level of cleric, you get access to another ability score improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and max out our dexterity. That means we now have 20 armor class by default even though we're not actually wearing any armor. Then at 13th level of Cleric, you get access to 7th level spells. And I wanted to focus a little more on the idea that you can regenerate your limbs. So we're gonna grab the spell Regenerate. This is another insanely powerful spell to have in your arsenal, especially in melee combat, because Regenerate lasts for an hour. It 
doesn't require concentration, and it's constantly healing you. As soon as it's cast, you regain 4d8 plus 15 hit points, and you're just constantly regaining one hit point at the start of every one of your turns. So even if you go down, you regenerate one hit point at the start of your turn, meaning that you can still get up and fight. And on top of that, this spell specifically says that it can regenerate small pieces of your body after two minutes. The only thing that isn't quite as accurate to the show is that if you actually have an entire arm that's cut off, you have to take the severed arm and put it on the stump and hold it there which is oddly specific for the spell, but I kind of like the overall feel of it. Then we could take one more level in Cleric to round things out, which would be fine, but all we would get is the ability to destroy slightly stronger undead with our channel divinity. So let's find one random way to boost ourselves up a little further with taking one more multi-class. And we're gonna multi-class into Fighter. By doing so, we get one more way to regenerate with the ability Second Win. So once per short or long rest, you can use a bonus action to regain some hit points equal to 1d10 plus your Fighter level, which I know is just one level of Fighter, but it's still nice to have. But what we're actually using this for is to get a Fighting Style. Because right now our punches are only doing a d6, and I wanna amp that up a bit. By taking one level in fighter, we get that fighting style and we can grab unarmed fighting, meaning our unarmed strikes now get upgraded to a D8 of damage. And on top of that, since we have that ability to grapple in the first place, unarmed fighting allows us to deal a 1d4 of damage to any creature we're grappling. So overall, it's just kind of a nice little boost to top off this build, because that brings us to 20th level overall. If there's anything you do differently with this build or any builds you want to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. That's where I get the idea for most of my builds. And I added way more spells to Piccolo's spell list over on the character sheet, which I have up on Patreon. So if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, including including all of the spells that I could possibly think would fit for Piccolo. Feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below, where you can be just as awesome as some of these people scrolling on by. Or my absolutely incredible supporters, Natron209, Johnny Dyer, Kevin Shirley, Zephros, That Funny Man 57 Joshua Maynard, CGC2014, F Storm, Elisa Martinez, Panda Milkshake, Ted Z, Andrew Nobles, Carquette Kitsune, Decker Joint, Z13, Viral Nerevar, Daniel Gavin, or the Dino21. Then going above and beyond that is my Dungeon Master level patrons that I play D&D &D with. Shane Gilroy, Daniel Saffler, Conman ZX, Cyber Society, Zalvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond anything I ever expected is my god tier level patron, Gamestake. He contributes more than I ever expected, so he's earned that god level title. So a very special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D &D session which happens to happen even more if you are subscribed to this channel because people have been letting me know that they happen to roll more nat 20s when they're subscribed. And hopefully that's happening even more if you want to play as Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z and Super and Kai and Dragon Ball and whatever other versions of Dragon Ball are out there in Dungeons and Dragons.